Uh, Vegas, the one place that you can go to escape your cares and worries and actually leave worse off than you were, whether it be in debt or fighting some weird disease that you've never even heard of prior to getting there. Luckily for me, I was able to make it back without any issue, but what's going on guys? This is Mark with Fit and Fire. Naturally, you have been flooded with content from a lot of different content creators, and I am no different. And this year, I have been trying to figure out ways to not only produce content that you guys are going to be interested in, but also see companies that you're going to be interested in as well. Radian is one of those companies, as well as Riley Defense, HRT, Zestava, Palmetto State Armory, and a host of other companies as well. I'm going to highlight a number of those in this video to maybe keep you guys interested. Naturally, you gotta stop by and see the Bellagio Water Show, which is always nice, but one of the things that's always difficult is trying to get to different spots and get good content without individuals such as Brass Facts photobombing your video and completely undermining everything that you're trying to do. <laughs> but with that being said, we also are swinging by old favorites like CZ and checking out to see if there is anything new. Spoiler alert, no, there's really not anything new from CZ and a number of different companies as well. One of the other great things that I like to do is swinging by and checking out the Hofbrau House. It's one of my favorite places to eat and to sit down and talk with friends. But with all that being aside, let's jump into the first company that I was able to chat with out at Range Day. Uh, we stopped and talked with the guys over at Flux. If you guys are not really interested in the Flux Raider or any type of PDW, then this is probably not going to be something that you're interested in. But I had not messed with the Flux Raider at all until this past week, and I really liked it. I didn't think I would, but I think that this is something that could be very, very useful. And uh, to be frankly honest with you, it's just flat out fun. Uh, that's what really boils down, down to. Uh, with that all being said, they did come out with a new Raider that is for the P365, and this was actually fairly interesting as well. They have a little slide, side flip brace slash stock, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it was also a lot of fun to shoot as well. A little punchy when you start to actually run this thing, and I was actually kind of surprised but it does have a nice little shroud over the barrel to help protect your thumb as well so that's something that I also liked and I uh, thought was pretty interesting in the way that they designed it all naturally there is going to be a lot of videos coming out in the future it has a spot for the spare magazine and also Flux is developing a holster for it as well. Probably saw some videos of uh, the guys with Flux drawing and shooting that uh, at the range or at least demonstrating how it works. And uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. It's a lot of fun. I'm a big fan of the P365, so seeing something developed for this was uh, fairly interesting as well. One of the other things that they had on display as well is the antimatter scope switch, but this time they had one that is electronic. And this is fed into a switch on your rail that you can just press a button and it will magnify the optic as you need it. It seems as if it's going fairly slow in moving from one power to six power, but actually looking through the scope, it's a lot faster than you would think it is. And as much as I feel that this is kind of a gimmick for a lot of us, individuals who like to shoot competition, this is something that might be interesting to them. Uh, I don't know if I would want to spend the four to six hundred dollars on a device like this, but one of the things that they were talking about is the fact that they are able to run a two battery suite that will be able to power a lot of other things than just the scope switch itself. So that was pretty interesting. I like the innovation 
on that piece of it. And I would imagine that this is going to be something that we're going to see a lot more of in the future, regardless if it is uh, scope switches or battery suites for all the different electronics and stuff like that. Visited a couple of other companies as well during the range day. This is Kimber with their 357 revolver. Never shot it before and I'm starting to get a little bit more into revolvers than I had in the past. But with all of that being said, it was fun just to go and have fun. Why not try some things out and see what else is going on. One of the other companies that I really did enjoy in checking out during range day was Shadow Systems. Uh, they have a new suppressor on the market and that thing was super, super quiet. I was actually really impressed. Now, naturally they were running 147 grain subsonics, so you should expect it to be quiet, but it has a removable baffle system that will allow you to put it into a K configuration, but take a listen. That was a lot of fun to shoot and uh, again, super, super quiet. Uh, even though I was wearing hearing protection because of all the other shooting around me, I'm pretty sure that that is going to be ridiculously hearing safe. So that was a lot of fun. And then they had a couple of uh, other pistols available for us to check out and have fun with as well. I don't know if I'm a big fan of Shadow Systems. I know that there is a kind of a cult following for them. Uh, they're fun to shoot. Anything's fun to shoot the first time, but uh, at the very least, it was interesting just to check out the different things that they have available, especially with their new ported barrel design that they're coming out with, very much like the Ramjet and Afterburner from Radian, which we'll be talking about here in just a second. With all that being said though, we did make it over to see the guys over at uh, Riley Defense and they have uh, a couple of different things that I'm excited for. Hey guys, we're over at Riley Defense and you know, we've been talking to a number of different companies and a lot of other companies have been promising cranks. Well, Riley Defense has already got one ready to go right now. This is their 762 crank that they've been putting out. Uh, how long would you say that you've had this going so far? Uh, we've, I mean, we've uh, reverse engineered the thing a while back, but we just started making them uh, three weeks ago. Right, and they're and out they're, delivering right They're gonna now. be available as of next week, yes. Okay, next week. So yes. ahead of the game when it comes to all of the other companies out there, they're also uh, having it available in uh, 545 and then 556 five, is five, five, six in about very a couple, soon. eight weeks. Yep. Uh, we're just waiting on the barrels. We have everything else for them. So as soon as the barrels come in, uh, we'll make them. Yep, and that's uh, something I really, really did like coming over here and seeing that they've got these ready to go uh, at any point in time right now. In addition to that, they're also running some of the uh, Yugo M77Bs, which is going to be the milled version of the M77. Correct, 100% so, correct. So, so tell us a little bit more about these. Sure, quick. so these uh, feature a, uh, a Thor Tort receiver, milled receiver, uh, US made nitrided barrel, uh, our trigger components, and a pistol grip, just enough parts to make them 922 arc implies. Correct, right. And we will probably have different versions for the California with the grip fin and so yeah, on and yeah. so forth. But the other great thing is you have some uh, kind of surplus stocks, uh, furniture sets that you're going to need. Absolutely, yeah, and, yeah. and probably this is one of the, I don't want to say it's the nicest one, that, but it's one of the nicer ones. So yeah, these yeah. things will have a lot of character, a lot yeah. of dings and so on and so forth. And the AK enthusiasts, really like this kind of yep. stuff. And this naturally is going to be set up in uh, 308, 762 by 51, but so yeah. We actually chambered in the 308, so you know, because it's widely more available. Exactly. And, and you could probably run 7651, yes, yep. mm -hmm. in, yep. in a 308, but not the other way around. Yep. So, and it's also great to see that you have a standard AKM style uh, optics mount here instead of the Yugo pattern which sometimes can be a little it bit It is harder. proprietary yeah, yeah. for them, so yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. hard. And we figured like, a lot of people have AKs and AK mounts, so yeah. why buy another one whenever you could slap 
your mount on it. Yep. It's always good to have that versatility. That's really interesting. So we've got this one, and then on top of that, we've got uh, your 100 series going yes. on as well. Oh, so yes. I'll go ahead and set this back up here real sure. quick. And you can kind of run down sure. the line on your uh, 100. So on the 100, this particular one is a uh, AK-74, and it will be made also in uh, 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 556 as well too. Uh, the only difference will be the barrel. Yeah. Um, when do you expect the uh, 556 to? 556 barrels are coming hopefully, hopefully in about 12 weeks. Okay, okay. So still, still possibly this year. Absolutely. Okay. Right now it's available in 762, uh, 762 or 545. There we go. I really do like these grips. You're saying you're making these grips in-house. Those yes. are really, really nice. Yes. Uh, you've got a uh, 4.5 millimeter pin. Uh, pin here for the folder, which is uh, kind of pretty much standard nowadays with it a is. lot of the different yes. companies. Four, so. Yeah, the Russians went with the 5.5. The Bulgarians went with the 4.5. Yep. And I think the, the 4.5 is a little bit... Uh, cooler because you know you, it leaves a little bit more meat on the uh, trunnion itself yep. so it gives point. a little bit more good strength point. yes so uh, everything on these look really really good and uh, the only really difference between the 762 uh, and the 556 and the 45 the 545 has a chrome lined barrel okay, uh, okay. because there are still a little bit of uh, corrosive ammo on the market yep. so we chrome line these so that's good that's good so uh, are these hammer forged barrels or these are 4150, okay. just chrome lines. Okay, yeah, yeah. they're still, still pretty good, still pretty good. So uh, there you have it, guys. There is uh, Riley Defense. I just wanted to stop by and say hi to them, kind of introduce myself and show off some of the stuff that they're putting out this year. Really, really do appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so we much. appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Thank so, you so much. More coming up. Obviously, I've already done one video with Palmetto State Armory, but let me tell you, they were crushing it this time around, introducing a whole host load of new products, whether it be conceptual designs or things that they're going to actually produce this year. Now, with PSA, you definitely have to kind of err on the side of caution and not get your hopes up on whether or not they're going to release something this year. Last year they talked about releasing the Crink, but it's not going to be out until this year later on. And uh, at the very least, they are committed to getting it out. But at the end of the day, it was a little disappointing that it was longer than necessary to get it out. With that being said, they did introduce a 308 version of the Jackal. I know a lot of people were talking about that in my other PSA video, so it was nice to see that there. And I really did like what they are doing with all of the new stuff by listening to the customers and showing exactly what they are trying to pull together to support customers as well. In addition to that, they also released a number of different things to include some new shotguns. And um, I was actually pretty impressed with the shotgun. It is based off of a 870. It does have a recessed RMR cut already in the receiver and uh, is going to partner up with uh, Magpul for a lot of the... Um, furniture sets, and so on and so forth. So that was really, really nice to see as well. In addition to all of that, they also were setting themselves up to run some bolt guns. And I think that would be an interesting market for them to dive into as well, because uh, as I get a little bit older, I'm looking to get more into precision style shooting, I guess but it's been interesting to see what they're pulling together and uh, i really do appreciate that setting it up on the 700 action from there we did go over and see radian let's check them out hey guys over at radian and you guys already know that they have the ramjet and the afterburner for the glock 19 well they're introducing the glock 17 as well in addition to that they're also dropping the p365 series of ramjet and afterburners as well. We got Ryan here, if you wanna talk about it real quick, it kind of gives a quick rundown of what we're seeing with both of these. I really appreciate that. Absolutely, so starting starting over here, uh, the Glock 17, 47, and 49 afterburner ramjet. Um, finally getting to, to, to producing those guys. Those will be shipping in April. 
uh, and they'll be consistent with the rest of the pricing on, on that uh, product line at $389.95. Um, super excited about that one. It softens the 17 up for the 47. As you, or is that a... That's a 17. 17 yep. So it so softens those guns up a ton. You're not even losing that dot as you're shooting. Um, just just a pleasure to shoot. It's, it's one of my favorite products we make. So super stoked there. Uh, moving over to the 365. Uh, these are our first products for the SIG platforms. Um, what you're seeing here is that expanded product line, like we said, Afterburner Ramjet. This is the 3.1 inch barrel, so that's going to fit your 365s and your 365Xs. Uh, we are working on a longer barrel configuration for those 3.7s, which will fit your XL and your X macros. Right. Um, other products on this firearm are our new backstrap and magazine well. Uh, they're designed in tandem. The uh, uh, excuse me, the back strap slides right up the rails on that X macro grip module, and then the magazine well slides right back there in this in this channel here on the grip, and then connects using a dovetail and a spring and detent. Super tight lockup, super aggressive serrations there. We all love this palm swell. Seems to fit Feels a lot good. of different yep. hands. Yep. Um, very aggressive serrations, like I said, but still very forgiving on the exactly. hands. Yep. Um, and then we also have our True 17 uh, magazine base pad. Uh, we designed it with just a little bit more space on those 365s that uh, uh, last round could be very difficult yep. to get into that magazine. Yep. So like I said, we engineered it with just a hair more space so you can get that uh, awesome. extra space, or excuse me, that last round in there every time. Yep, and then on top of that you have this product right here. Uh, I'm not going to butcher it up because I know that uh, I'm going to mess it up, but go ahead and run through what we got going on. With you. Absolutely, so that's our Guardian product. Right, Guardian. Um, we've been to market for, for a fair time uh, with this guy. This is the MOS, so it's built for the MOS cut and then specifically for the RMR uh, optic. Um, it's an upgraded mounting system for your pistol red dots. Um, we've got our true seal system, so the plate screws that, that tie the plate to the slide have O-rings on them. They seal out any kind of moisture. You do not have to run an aftermarket sealing plate. It also has our stud lock system, so instead of screwing into the MOS plate, it has studs that protrude from the plate right. with our oversized sleeve nuts. So you get more than twice the thread engagement. Sorry, phone's blowing up. Um, you get more than twice the thread engagement on those uh, um, those studs, so you get a super tight lockup on your optic. Um, I think the forward guard is just a bonus to all that. When you're optic racking, that's going to redirect all of that shear force into the slide rather than onto those yep. screws. Yep. It also has our integrated six sights. It's a super low co-witness. Uh, irons forward design comes with the rear integrated sight, the front sight up here. We also sell it with a rear dovetail filler because we could not leave you with an open dovetail. They are, right? It <laughs> makes it look nice, clean yes, lines sir. with that. Yeah. Form, fit, function. Yeah. Looks great. Absolutely. Looks great. Well, I really do appreciate it, Ryan. Thank Absolutely. you so much for running through. I'm really excited to look into the P365. That's one of my EDCs, and uh, I, I just love that platform. I shoot it really well, and this, I think, is probably just going to make me even better So, because <laughs> I need all the help I can get. You're so. good man. <laughs> Thanks, man. More coming up. And then finally, we did swing by and see our old friends over at HRT, and they have some new stuff, too. All right, guys, what's going on? We're over at HRT. You guys know that uh, I've been running the rack plate carrier for quite some time. They've got the arc belt that they came out with last year, and they've got a couple of additional additions, I guess, if you want to say that way, uh, on their arc belt, as well as some handheld prototypes that they're looking at this year, too. But, Chris, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoy coming over and catching up with you. Tell me about some of the things that you guys are trying to work on moving forward this year. All right, so last year at CHOP, we specifically said the arc belt system was phase one. Yep. As we moved into 2023, we wanted to get some better kit out to supplement into phase two. So the first product out is a drop pouch. It folds up very nice and neat if you like to fold it up. But it's also nice, deep. It's a 500D Cordura, so it's going to be very durable, especially if you're using something like, say, a aluminum or metal mag. It also has the Tegris interface option, so if you want to attach that to your belt, they will come with Tegris rigid clips. In addition, we also came out with an IFAC for 2024. It does use a pull system. It has attached Molly T's to make sure that you have something to grip with 
One of the biggest questions was, is this going to snag? We've ran this for about three and a half months doing different type of training, and we haven't had any issues with this snagging. Um, so this is a pull system. It's better when it's on a belt because you have the anchor system which you can pull from. Right. When it opens up, it is a dual layer system. You have your outer shell, and then you have your system with a quattro fold. One of the big things about this system is it has an internal organization. You can use something like one wrap, or you could use bungees. On the inside, it has a Tegris interface so that you have a multiple option in the way that you want to organize your iPhone. It gives it a little bit more rigidity as well, it so it's does. not kind of molding a little bit on so, your belt. Exactly, and even if you're attaching it to the arc belt, or you're attaching it to the Molly on a plate carrier, this is gonna give you that much more rigidity to hold it in place so it's not flopping. Outstanding. That's so awesome. the tourniquet pouch, it does attach to the IFAC. It can be attached to the bottom or the top, depending on your preference, but it just mollies in with the associated clips that come with it. Outstanding. That's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. It's something that everybody should have on their belt I agree. or their kit anyway. So that's awesome. We got some handhelds that you're looking at trying to do this year as well. Um, these are still in the prototype phase, is that they correct? Are. And uh, tell us a little bit about each one of these that you got going. So in 2023, we came out with a LITE light version of the AWLS. Um, it was a 55,000 candela, uh, approximately 1,700 lumen. People were asking for a little bit more spill, so we did come out with a new light head, but this is our 18350 handheld. It is going to come with a Theorem clip on it when it is purchased. It does have an on-off, and you can use momentary as well. It is an 18350 rechargeable only. The larger body is an 18650 or a dual fuel. They will be available for the original AWLS or the AWS light head. So the prices are going to be varying to sub 300 for the AWLS and lower 200s for the AWS light. My understanding is you have the ability to swap heads back and forth yes, between these and everything. So that's awesome. Yes, sir. That's awesome. And then uh, one of the other things I think is kind of simple and yet everybody forgets it, especially yesterday at the range <laughs> day when it was just pouring out rain. You guys have come out with something, a nice, light, easy windbreaker, gets some correct. weather protection as well. Uh, obviously, if it's going to be a massive downpour, it's not going to uh, kind of or protect you from that for long periods of time, no. but nice drizzle, light rain, you guys have something easy that you can put into your kit and have with you, or exactly. a backpack, or a 72-hour bag, or something to that effect. So one thing that we noticed that we weren't really offering was outerwear, yes. and outerwear is starting to become something that people, like you said, they very much overlook. And one of the biggest issues with outerwear is taking up size and weight. So this is sub one pound. Uh, when it's in this type of system, it definitely folds into a very small package, easy storage, and when it's deployed, it is a quarter zip on the front, and it's basically a pullover system with a hood. It does have some water resistance, but it's mostly just for the wind breaking yeah. or for, say, 50 to 60s on the low. Yeah. Put on a base layer, and then you can increase your insulation, and it just helps out that much yeah. more. It's, and it's smart. It's simple. It's, it is. It's something that people, like you said, overlook, you know, and uh, could have been greatly used yesterday. So, uh, well, we nice. are going to offer this in three or four colors. Yep. We're going to do the multicam. We are going to do black, coyote, and green. Um, and it's going to be available in medium, large, and extra large for the first run. And the beautiful thing about this is the price. We're going to be doing an introductory price on this at $35. Yeah, so pretty uh, inexpensive. You can buy a few of them, stash them exactly. around, different kits and stuff like that. Um, do you have a idea of when this is going to launch on these? This is already launched. So okay. awesome. it, the moment you watch this, if interested, you can go to the website. It will be available on the website. Okay. And then how about your, uh, your lights and uh, the pouches and everything else, the, the time frame on when you expect those? So my hope 
And again, this is shot. Everybody, please. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, a lot it. of these are still in the T and E phase. We just want to let everybody know that we do have these products coming. Hopefully, the drop pouch. We will not have that many changes to it, uh, but we will hope to have this out by spring. The IFAC, same thing. Hope to have this available by spring. Uh, since these are electronics. Um, we are hoping to have these out by late spring, summertime. Period. Okay, all right. So still pretty early in the year. Yeah, you know. we want to have these out as soon as possible. Yeah. We don't want to put on that, hey, uh, and not to knock other companies, MP5. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love those guys as well, but we understand, you know, you go through the actual R&D process, and that R&D process may not go like you had planned, but we've ran these quite a bit. We've done some good T&E on it. And we're going to start getting these out to people for feedback. And then once we get that feedback from outside of our own insight, then we can start saying, yo, this thing is ready to push awesome. out. Well, that's a really cool lineup. I know you guys have a few other things going on too, but uh, these are the ones that really caught my eye and I thought were important to put out there. So, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Mark, thank you. Uh, it's always a great pleasure to see you. And uh, we, we look forward to a great year for you guys. And to all the Fit and Fire uh, subscribers, these guys are great. So if you guys are following them, please do. And if you're just watching their videos and you're not subscribing, hit that subscribe button because that just makes them have more influence. Yeah, really do appreciate that. <laughs> so as we close a, another SHOT Show, I am trying to decide whether or not I'm even going to go to next year. I did have a lot of fun. It's always great to see my friends and uh, meet new friends as well. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of money for a industry that is not advancing as quickly as a lot of people would expect it to. Yeah, there's a lot of new cool things and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, I'm not sure if 2025 is going to be something I'm going to dive into, but I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Let me know down in the comments, and we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.